This is the story of an integral part of the Air Force that is vital to American defense, the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Below lies Dobbins Air Force Base, set in the red clay hills and dales of northern Georgia. And a couple of miles further on, grouped around the square at its heart, is the small city of Marietta. Marietta is southern, all right, but from the looks of it, it might be located almost anywhere in the USA. It possesses all the standard features, banks, churches, shops, offices, movie theaters. For every man in the Air Force or Reserve who flies, whether as pilot or crew member, there are ten on the ground taking care of machines or personnel. Like the Air Force, the Reserve is a team, functioning by virtue of the cooperation of all its members. Cooperation, essential to readiness, strikes the keynote around the clock. In every emergency since 1776, our country has ultimately come to depend on civilians to man its armed forces. But today, or two, he began to miss that special feeling of pride that comes to a man who's serving his country. So he joined the Air Force team in the reserve. On the strength of his wartime service, he became a major and has advanced since then to colonel. Sam frankly enjoys the responsibility that command brings, but his feelings go deeper than that. All in all, though he himself probably wouldn't put it just that way, Sam derives a real satisfaction from participating in a leading role in something so important, so imperative, as our joint national defense effort. Or take Ed White, hardware salesman and gunsmith extraordinary. Ed likes the pay, and he sure looks forward to the 15-day active duty period each summer. station is where Joe Riley plies his trade. Joe is an enthusiast for jet engines. He likes to work on them out at the air base. But apart from that, he considers the air reserve a good deal in itself. At the local clothing store, Johnny Train isn't exactly tending to business. No need to describe his reasons for being in the reserve. Johnny's a typical pilot. If you tied his hands behind his back, he'd hardly be able to say a word about the things that really count in life, that is. Young Tim Selden, poultry farmer, is a long way from being a flyer, but he'll get there yet. In the meantime, he likes the companionship of other reservists. As Tim himself puts it, that's a real good bunch of boys in that outfit. We sure do have good times together. And man, what a lot there is to learn. Why, I could never get that kind of job training anywhere else in this world, even if I paid for it. And the funny thing is, they pay me. Automobile salesman Doug Wood has his own approach in the reserve, too. Doug is the go-getter type, and he's hot for promotion. With so much energy to burn, a man like him needs an extra job to keep him happy. practice air raid, an alert set for 11. There it goes. of the regular Air Force take to the air. And 
members of the Air Reserve Unit rush out to the air base. Poultry farmer Tim Selden dashes to his duty post in communications. Grease monkey? No, Master Sergeant Joe Riley runs out to his station by the planes, parking orders. Ed White, hardware salesman, becomes Edward White, armorer. And banker Sam Campbell becomes Colonel Campbell, wing commander. He assumes command of the base under the eyes of the regular Air Force commanding officer of the same rank. In the briefing room, Doug Wood, in the uniform of a major, briefs the reserve pilots. This is a scramble, a practice alert. Unidentified planes are approaching the Atlantic coast. The pilot's task, to intercept them. So Johnny Crane, the fly-happy clothing salesman, gets ready to take off. of our nation's security, sentinels in the air. <laughs> 